we'll say that every one day our script is going to update. It's going to pull the latest values from alpha squared, whatever the latest risk value is. It's going to plug that risk value into the schedule that you have defined, and then it's going to place a trade on your behalf. Please ignore all of the crazy mess behind me. We're in the middle of moving. What's up, guys? If you've been following the channel for a while now, you're probably familiar with a product that I reviewed in the past called Alpha Squared. If you're not familiar with it, Alpha Squared basically gives you a 0 to 100 risk number for how risky the Bitcoin markets are today. And it's probably easier if we just jump into Alpha Squared and I show you what I'm talking about. Basically, today, the Alpha Squared risk number is 35. And you can see what the historical risks have been over time as they correspond with price. But my favorite feature of Alpha Squared is if you come up here to the member area and then you click on Strategy Builder, you'll be taken to this page where you can select either one of their pre-made strategies or my favorite thing is to create my own custom strategy. And you can see here that I can fill out the buying and the selling with whatever numbers I want. And then if I scroll down, I can click on Calculate and see how well my strategy would have performed versus a dumb dollar cost averaging strategy over some defined period of time. So you can see that obviously if I'd started doing this in 2016, I would have like almost three times as much profit as just a regular dumb DCA strategy. And then if I scroll down here, I can see exactly where my strategy would have been buying and selling across the history of the Bitcoin price graph. So this is really cool. And this is personally my favorite part of the service that Alpha Squared is offering. But what's really annoying about it is I don't want to have to go every day and say, hey, what is the Alpha Squared risk number? I don't want to have to click back here on my risk model dashboard and say, okay, today's a 35, and then go to my strategy builder and say, all right, my custom strategy, it corresponds to, in this case, it would be between 35 and 40, so it would probably select the 40. And then I'd have to go to Coinbase and place a order manually for $40. That whole process is a nightmare. And I don't want to do that every day. That's I have way better things to do than be babysitting the strategy and, you know, manually placing trades every day or every week or every month or however often I want to place trades with this alpha squared strategy. So instead, what I'm going to show you how to do today is how to automatically integrate this alpha squared risk strategy into a dollar cost averaging bot over on Coinbase. So first of all, links to all of the stuff that we're covering today is gonna to be down in the description. So if you get lost at any point, definitely check those resources out and you'll have written step-by-step -step guides on how to execute exactly what we're doing here today. So the first thing we're gonna do is open console.aws.amazon.com and we're going to upload the latest code that includes both the Coinbase Advanced Trade API and the Alpha Squared API. If you're not familiar with AWS or you don't understand how we're using it here on the channel, check out the video up in the cards and down in the description. That's gonna give you a little bit more more insight into why we use AWS and how it's helping us achieve these automations. And just know that every way that we're using AWS in this video is totally free. So now that we're here in AWS, we're going to click on Lambda. And if you don't see Lambda on your home screen, you can just search Lambda up here in the search bar. Next over here on the left-hand side of the screen, we're going to click on Layers. And then for some of you, you might already have a Coinbase Advanced Trade Python demo layer. If not, you're going to click on Create a New Layer. You can call this layer Coinbase Alpha Squared. And then for a description here and to determine what file to upload, you're going to want to jump over to GitHub and get the latest version of the code. And I'll have links to this GitHub again down in the description. So check out releases over here on the right hand side of the screen. And this is going to show you whatever the latest release of the code is. And whatever the latest release of the code is, there should be a layer Python 3.9 x86 64.zip. So you're going to just click on that and that will download for you. Next, we'll go ahead and copy this description right here. In this case, we're copying version 0.3.2 and it's the Alpha Alpha squared integration. Let's go ahead and copy that and put that in our description just so that we remember which version of the code we downloaded. Next, we'll choose to upload a zip file and we'll click on this upload button. And we'll just go ahead here and click on the Coinbase Advanced Trade Python zip that we just downloaded from GitHub. And then here when we select a runtime, we need to make sure that it's Python 3.9. Otherwise, it's not going to be compatible with the layer that we just uploaded. The layer that we just uploaded was specifically compiled for Python 3.9. And if you want to use it in later Python versions, you're going to need to recompile the layer so that all the cryptography packages compile properly. And then if we scroll down here, we can click on create. And if you already had a layer.zip, you just wanted to update it to the latest version, you would just be in your layer.zip here, you'd click on create version, and then you would give it a meaningful description like we did here so that you could keep track over time of which layer had which version. So next, we'll click back up here into Lambda and we'll click on create function. We'll author our function from scratch and we'll call this alpha squared Coinbase YouTube demo. And we'll choose the runtime as Python 3.12. We'll choose x86.64 and then we'll click on create function. What's up guys, we're out from the future. I'm editing the video right now. I have moved as you can see. Thank you, congratulations, I appreciate it. In the video that you just watched, I told you to set up a Lambda function with Python 3.12. 
you actually need to set it up with Python 3.9 because the layer.zip that you downloaded earlier in the video was compiled specifically with Python 3.9. If you set up this environment with Python 3.10 or 11 or 12 or something else besides Python 3.9, or in the future, whatever the new layer.zip says the Python version is in the name of the layer.zip, if you're watching this video a year from now or two years from now and there's a different environment on that layer.zip. Bottom line, if the name of the file says 3.9, and then you set up a Lambda function with 3.10 or 12 or 15 or 24, however far into the future this is, you're gonna end up getting this weird error that I get about two minutes from now in the video that I've kept in the video just to show you how to fix it if you do run into the error. But you can avoid any errors and you can skip that part of the video as long as the layer that you downloaded, the version matches the version of the function that you're trying to create. So now that I beat that to death, let's get back to the video. So when we get into our Lambda function here, the first thing that we wanna change is in this configuration tab here, we're gonna scroll down and we wanna change this timeout from three seconds to probably about a minute. And this is going to make sure that if it takes longer than three seconds for our script to run, which it probably will, that our script isn't timing out and doing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes that we don't want it to do. So let's do that and then click on save. Next, we'll come back here to the code tab and we'll scroll down to the bottom and add a layer. And again, if you already have a function that needs a new layer, you can come down here and just select a new custom layer. And you'll, in this case, select our version 0.3.2 alpha squared integration and version one or if you've done multiple versions, you'll have to select the correct version of, in this case, 0.3.2. And now you'll click on add. And basically what that's doing is it's saying for the code that we write here, we want to have access to all of the stuff that we packaged in that layer.zip from Coinbase and from Alpha Squared. So now when we write Coinbase and Alpha Squared specific things into this Amazon console, it's going to know exactly what we're talking about. So next let's highlight all this stuff that we have here in Lambda function and just click on delete. And then we'll head over to the blog post that I'll have linked down in the description. And if you haven't subscribed to the blog, I'd highly suggest that you do if you're interested in this content because you're going to get access to all of these videos in advance in a written form. And sometimes there's a little bit more detail that I'm able to include in the blog that I forget to include in the videos. So if we scroll down here to the code, we're just going to click on this big ugly copy button that I need to refactor and make a little better. And that's going to copy all of the code within this code block. So now we can jump back over to AWS and just paste this within our Lambda function. And now there are a couple of things that we need to configure within this Lambda function to hook it up to our specific Coinbase accounts and our specific specific alpha squared accounts. The first thing we need to do is log into Coinbase and get an API key. So we'll click over here on our faces and we'll click on settings. We'll scroll down here and we'll click on API and then we'll create a new API key. And we'll call this one alpha squared AWS tester. We'll give this the view and the trade permissions and then we'll go ahead and create and download this API key. Remember when you're generating an API key not to share your API key with anyone else. Because if someone else sees this information, they're going to be able to plug this into their own scripts and make trades on your account. So if you ever access expose your API keys, just come back into this menu and delete or turn off the API keys that you think have been compromised. With that being said, next let's click on this API key name. We'll go ahead and copy this code and we'll put it back into AWS. So we're going to delete this your Coinbase API key piece and paste in our Coinbase API key. We'll come back to Coinbase. We'll click on private key, copy, come back to the Lambda function, and then just paste. So now we have a Coinbase API key and an API secret that are linked up to our Coinbase accounts. And then back in Coinbase, I'll click on I've saved my key. And now I have this alpha squared AWS tester that I can turn on and off whenever I want to. And notice I didn't give it the transfer permission because I don't want if I forget to turn this API key off after the video happens, I don't want someone to be able to transfer funds out of my account to some wallet that they own. So just another way to keep yourself secure when you're managing API keys here on Coinbase. The next thing we need to do is we need to hook up our alpha squared accounts. So let's go ahead and click back into alpha squared we'll go up to member area and we'll click on user dashboard next we'll click on api access here and we'll click on our api token here to copy it we go back now over to the lambda function we'll highlight this part that says api key alpha squared and we'll paste our api key in there just like that so now this script is hooked up not only to our coinbase accounts but also to our alpha squared accounts the final thing we need to do here is we need to select a strategy name and we need to select a product id from coinbase so for example i have this defaulted to bitcoin usdc because 
because I use Alpha Squared for its Bitcoin indicator, not its Ethereum or Solana indicators, even though those are available and this API would work with those. And then I'm using USDC instead of USD or GBP or some other fiat currency because I like to earn interest on my USDC while it's just sitting passively in my Coinbase account. So go ahead and update your product ID. And then next we need to update our strategy name. And this strategy name is coming directly from Alpha Squared. So if we click back here into Alpha Squared, we can look at our strategy builder and we can select the strategy here that we want to put into the script. I'm going to do two demos here, one with my custom strategy. And we'll see that based on the risk indicator that we saw earlier of like 35.4, I think it was. Let's open that in another tab just to make sure that that's what it was. So 35.2 is today's risk number. So that means that it's actually going to buy uh, $60 of Bitcoin because it's between 35 and 40. So you can read this as if it's between zero and five, it will buy 200. If it's between five and 10, it will buy 180. And so because it's between 35 and 40, it's gonna try to buy 60. So we'll do my custom strategy first to show you that it works with buys. And then we'll click on my sell strategy over here so that we can demo what a sell is gonna look like on the Coinbase platform because there is a little bit of a difference between buying and selling with Alpha Squared. So first let's come back here into AWS and we'll call this my custom strat which is the exact name and case and spacing of the strategy that exists here on Alpha Squared. And so now that was the last piece of information that we needed to add to this script. So now we can just go ahead and start trying to test the script. Next, we can click over here in our Lambda function on create test event. And we're just gonna call this test event test Coinbase Alpha Squared and we'll click on save. Next, we'll see our test Coinbase Alpha Squared thing here and we can go ahead and click on play and this should be placing a buy order because we used my custom strat for about $60 of Bitcoin. So let's go ahead and see how that works. And you'll notice it didn't do anything. And that's because I forgot to deploy my changes. Up here, you'll see that it says you have undeployed changes and you'll see that this is, if you've been following the channel for a while, a very different user interface than we're used to here in Lambda functions. So we're using the new console editor. And so the deploy button is now over here. So we're gonna click on this deploy function first. And now all of our code is going to be up in AWS. And now we're going to be able to click on this test Coinbase Alpha Squared function. And hopefully now it should make a buy order. So just look out for that. If you're getting something that you're not expecting to have happen, make sure that over here on deploy, you are up to the latest version of the code and that AWS knows what code it's supposed to be executing. So next let's go ahead and click on play again. So the reason I'm running into this error here, and it's a good learning opportunity for all of us, if you run into this CFFI backend error in the logs, this is probably what's happening to you too. So if you come down here to runtime settings and you click on edit, we're using a Python 3.1.2 runtime for this Lambda function, but the layer.zip that we generated on GitHub was actually compiled specifically for Python 3.9. And so actually you can't use this layer with 3.9 and 10 and 11 and 12, you can only use it with 3.9. So let's go ahead and change this back to 3.9. We'll leave the architecture the same. It should still be x86-64. And so then we'll come down here and click on save. I'm going to edit the first part of the video so that no one else hopefully does that. But if you do run into this error, that's what's happening. Your version of Python that you created the Lambda function with is incompatible with the version of Python that generated the layer.zip. So now if we scroll down here, we'll see that I have Python 3.9 in my runtime settings. And so should be good to go. Come back up here, click on my test and click on play. And let's see if we get some orders over here in Coinbase. And there we are, my limit buy, or if I click on it, it should be about $60. See if I make it a little bit bigger, $60 and 72 cents is the fee. So I went ahead and canceled that order. And now let's update the strategy so that we can see what it would look like in a sell case. So if we go back over to alpha squared, I can change my strategy to the sell strategy test. And we'll see that in the sell strategy, over here, we're selling a percentage of our portfolio. And this is the really big difference between buying and selling. You'll see over here on Alpha Squared in the buy strategy section, it says dollar amount to buy. And in the selling strategy section, it says percentage of Bitcoin to sell. So when I have a five on the buy strategy, it means buy $5. But when I have a five over here on the sell strategy, it means sell 5% of the total amount of Bitcoin that's in my current portfolio. So instead to make the math easy, I'm going to make it sell 1% of my current portfolio. So now all we have to do to update the strategy on the back end is update the name of the strategy. So instead of my custom strat, I'm gonna call it sell strategy test. And what that's going to do is 
between 35 and 40 now, I'm saying sell 1% of the current Bitcoin that's in my Coinbase portfolio. And you probably wouldn't do this when the risk is this low, but again, this is just for demo purposes to show you the functionality of selling and that it is gonna be different than the functionality of buying. Based on this percentage of Bitcoin to sell versus this fixed dollar amount. Let's go ahead back over to AWS, make this a little bit bigger, and we'll change the strategy name to sell strategy test. And just double checking that that is the right strategy name. So that's correct. I'm gonna deploy my unsaved changes and then we'll come back over here. We'll click on portfolio to see how much Bitcoin is in here right now. We'll see that we've got 0.47811 Bitcoin. So if we go back to orders, we should be expecting to sell 0.47811 divided by 100, so 1% of that, after we run this test. So we've updated our code, we've clicked on deploy, and now let's click on play. And so now a sell order has opened up for 0.47811 Bitcoin, and that's about 29 USDC. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this order also, but if I just left it here, eventually it would fill. So just to recap real quickly, what did we do here? We connected our Coinbase accounts and our Alpha Squared accounts to this AWS script. Then we connected the AWS script to any custom strategy that we want to build over here on alpha squared and it's really easy for us to swap out which strategy we're playing with just calling out again that the selling side is percent of asset to sell and the buying side is static dollar amount that you want to buy so we've done all that now how can we automate it every day or every week or every month so that this we don't have to think about it at all our trades just execute automatically behind the scenes without us ever having to do anything to do that we'll click back here into aws and i'll go ahead and close coinbase for the moment so this script now works we can leave it alone and we'll just reference the name alpha squared coinbase youtube demo for the future we'll go up here into search and we'll search for event bridge and so over here in event bridge we'll see event bridge scheduler and we'll click on create a schedule we'll call this automate alpha squared coinbase trades and we'll give it this description automates that lambda function you place coinbase trades we'll leave the group alone and we'll create a recurring schedule and we'll create a rate based schedule we'll say that every one day our script is going to update it's going to pull the latest values from alpha squared whatever the latest risk value is it's going to plug that risk value into the schedule that you have defined, and then it's going to place a trade on your behalf. For flexible time window, we'll click off. And then for daylight savings time, we don't really need to do anything, so we'll go ahead and click next. And you actually need to make sure that there's no spaces in the name of your automation. So let's turn those spaces into hyphens and then click on next. We're going to target an AWS Lambda function to invoke, and we're going to choose the Lambda function that we just created, Alpha Squared Coinbase YouTube demo. Then we'll scroll down here and click on next. We're gonna go ahead and choose to enable the schedule, and then we're going to turn off the retry policy. Some people have been having trouble in the past. They're like, why am I getting three invocations or three buy orders or three sell orders every day? It's because your retry policy is happening, and it's saying like, if the script throws an error for any reason, it's going to retry. And an error doesn't mean that the order didn't get sent to Coinbase. So what can sometimes happen if you don't turn off the retry policy is that an order will be successfully sent to Coinbase, but AWS will see an error get generated. And then it will say, oh no, I don't want to get that error anymore. I need to retry. It will retry. It will send another successful order to Coinbase. It will see another error. And then it will say, oh no, I need to retry, I got another error, and then you'll end up with three buys or something like that. So it's best to just go ahead and leave this retry policy totally off. So now if we scroll down here, we'll click on next. We're calling this once a day, and then we'll just click on create a schedule. So it just completed creating the schedule, and so if you were back here in AWS and you ever wanted to go turn this automation off, you would see recently visited event bridge in your dashboard here, or you would search for it up there at the top. You would come over here to schedules on the left-hand side of the screen, and then you would see this automate alpha squared coinbase trade schedule that we had just created and then you'll click on this disable button up here and then your automation won't run anymore and if we come over to coinbase we'll note that when i just created that schedule for the first time and said let's go it's going to place a trade for the first time that is going to be day zero and so 24 hours from now it's going to place another trade so i can go ahead and click on this order and click on cancel be aware that if you do automate trades like this in my case if i left this totally alone and we went back to sell strategy test this is probably based on what I have defined here in Alpha Squared, going to sell 1% of my portfolio like every day because 
for the most part, the risk numbers for the next while will probably be between 30 and 55 just because of the state of the market. So be very careful with what you're actually defining here as a strategy within Alpha Squared so that what you want to have happen is actually what is happening. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and it made sense. If you do have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments or jump over to the Discord and ask any of us that are over there. The community is growing slowly but steadily and there are more and more programmers coming into the Discord and building some really cool things. Let me know what you want to see included into the Coinbase advanced trade wrapper next and check out these tutorials to learn more about how to set up some of this stuff for yourself. I love you all. See you next week.